So uh, today is all about uh, uh, people, the residents coming in and, uh, um, and seeing what's happened uh, with their homes and, uh, um, and getting a bit of closure and, uh, and helping them with the grieving process and uh, moving into the recovery process for them and the rebuilding process hopefully. We had incredible winds uh, the night of the 18th and uh, the fire uh, took a run and it moved uh, 20 kilometers in 12 hours and, uh, and it was just it was burning whatever was in its path including our fire hall. It certainly was something to see uh, the fact that it had moved so quickly to you know from from uh, puffing away in the hills to uh, you know rank six behavior crossing the highway uh, and moving as quickly as it had was was something I had never seen before. Uh, the flames uh, certainly made it absolutely impassable and if there was no amount of resources we could have put on that that would have made any kind of difference. I mean, all of our firefighters were out doing what they could to try and manage that fire but it was like using a squirt gun on a house fire. You just, there was nothing that could have been done to, to stop that progression. Um, this beautiful kind of tunnel of trees that you went through that was green and lush, and, and that's now all gone, unfortunately. And it's, uh, it is very sad to see it. Uh, I, I, I do this type of work uh, regularly, and uh, it's, uh, it's always difficult to see when people lose their homes and to, to meet them and to talk to them. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, so we've gone through the process of allowing those that uh, lost structures to privately have time to see their properties uh, through these last couple of days. We are now moving into a re-entry phase and, and so it is a bittersweet day because we've switched from one phase to another and this is an opportunity now for residents to return to their properties uh, which are still standing.